Hello my friends, my name is Christine and welcome to my channel and today's video. Now, if you are not subscribed yet, maybe check out that subscribe button down below and if you like cook with me videos, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button before we get started. I hope you guys are ready for a week of cooking with me because that's what we have going on. The very first part of this video is gonna be tail end things before I did my big grocery shopping haul. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll leave it up here and down below. The second half of the video is like, things I started to make with all of my new produce and delicious foods. Without further ado, let's head to the Cooking with Christine show. The worst cooking show on TV. Real bad. <laughs> Tonight for dinner, I decided to take some random things hanging around and make nachos. So I pulled this sausage out of the freezer. I'm gonna brown it up and then add one can of Rotel, probably half of this, and a couple of cream cheese halves that I have. Pour it over the chips. It's gonna add some flavor. And we're gonna call that dinner tonight. Is it super healthy? Not necessarily. Is it delicious? Absolutely. And do you need some delicious food in these current times? Sometimes you just do. We're making nachos. Nachos for dinner. It's gonna be amazing. The kids are gonna be happy. Ooh, not bad. My endorphin levels are gonna shoot through the roof. I'm so excited. Today we're finishing up all of the clearance non from the freezer and I will have none left. You'll have none none? I will have no none. We're making pizzas. Two pizzas? I have some pizza sauce in the pantry. I had some Italian sausage in the freezer, some bacon in the freezer and we always have cheese because we don't want to have an emergent cheese. Emergent cheese emergency. I got it. Okay, yeah, okay. So we're having for lunch today. And I pulled the rest of my Bing. Bing, cherry. Cherries out of the freezer and we're gonna make a cherry crisp today. Get these out of here and I may or may not have some vanilla ice cream in the outside freezer to finish that up. So still cleaning out the freezer. Um, sometimes we just gotta make the sweets, you know what I'm saying? I'm still carrying a little holiday weight. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I found some edamame in the freezer as well, and I thought this, we should probably have a vegetable with our pizza, so I'm cooking this up as well. Let's make some burgers. So I have three pounds-ish of ground beef right here. Um, if you are newer to my channel, I have a significant amount of ground beef and I guess beef in general in my freezer due to my old boss from my old internet marketing company job, who was, he doesn't like the flavor of grass fed beef. Like this was his cow and he may or may not have eaten the neighbor's lawn. So he may or may not have met an early demise <laughs> as, as punishment. It's kind of a funny story, but like fully grass fed and he just, he just didn't prefer the flavor of it. And he was like, oh, just get it out of my freezer. And so he gave me approximately 100 or 130 pounds of assorted beef cuts. And then I also have a significant amount of beef from my brother. My brother used to raise cows. I don't think he has any now. And he butchered two cows and gave me like 300 pounds of beef. So I have been trying to go through what essentially is like half a cow since I would say April of last year, April of 2019. And burgers are a great use of that. It, they taste delicious, it uses a lot of ground beef, and I have a lot of ground beef. So um, I just thought it would be really good to do. I think I just had some McCormick hamburger flavored uh, package, um, that little sprinkle that I gave at the beginning. Uh, you can buy it at any store, I've seen it at Walmart. I like all of the McCormick flavorings. You can add some liquid smoke. I've done Montreal steak and that's been delicious. Your traditional salt and pepper is always a winner. There's all kinds of things you can add just to the plain hamburger meat. And I ended up making quarter pounder burger patties. So the three pounds of beef made me 12 burgers, which in retrospect, probably not the best plan because the packages of buns only come in packages of eight. So I had 16 buns and 12 burgers. So that was a big oops. And as a side, I thought cucumbers would be delicious. My family adores cucumbers, except for Dave. He's kind of meh about them. Like he'll eat them because they're good for you or whatever, but he's like, nah, I could go without. But you know what? I feel that way about olives and I serve them to him. So this is just like everybody else loves the cucumbers. So we're just gonna do the cucumbers, right? The kids get super excited when we have these. And of course they're not as good as garden cucumbers, but hopefully we'll have those soon. I think some fresh sliced tomato on your burger is fabulous. So 
I like them really, really thickly sliced. And then Dave likes them paper, paper thin. So tell me what team you are on. Are you on team thick tomato slices or are you on team thin tomato slices? I also think pickles, these are homemade pickles, make like they make the sandwich, any sandwich. Make a sandwich, well, maybe except for peanut butter and put pickles on it and it's gonna be the best. Here is one of my veggies in the air fryer. I decided to do asparagus, so I have two pounds of asparagus. To make them easier to eat, I do like to chop my asparagus into maybe two, one to two inch pieces. I find if I leave them big, like they look nice, but the kids really have a hard time eating them. So cutting them like this makes it so much easier to serve to kids and they'll be more likely to eat it. So here's my air fryer. It's a 5.8 quart or six quart kasori. I will link it down below for you. It is red because red is awesome. And you can use oil in your air fryer. And the secrets of all of my air fryer veggies, it's all the same guys. I do oil, salt, and pepper and stir it around. <laughs> That's it. Like I do the exact same thing to everything. I do it to the homemade French fries. I do it to the carrot fries, the asparagus, the Brussels sprouts, the green beans, the cabbage, like everything I put in the air fryer, I season basically the same. Sometimes I might add a little garlic powder or whatever, but I mean, I'm telling you, they just always turn out right. So here we go. We have the asparagus, the burgers, the sides, the kids can pick whatever they want. Haley wanted to put on some French fried onions on top of her burger. I fully support that choice. Next up, we have the roast from the Alex Gordoshelli cookbook at home, cook at home or something like that. I'll link that down below as well. It's, I, I am loving this cookbook. It's really, really great. And this is the recipe that I had to go to the store and get the wine for. So here's my roast. And I, I think I followed her recipe almost exactly. And uh, step number one was to season liberally with salt and pepper. Like this is a massive cut of meat, maybe five, five or six pounds. And she said in the book, like, a lot a lot of salt a lot of salt because it's it's a lot of meat right you know what i'm saying and plus i'm using kosher salt here which is not as salty as table salt so i spent a long time doing this and hey side note if you see the skirt i'm wearing like kind of behind this roast isn't it so cute i just picked it up from stitch fix i may have been online shopping more than normal and I've gotten a few things from Stitch Fix in the last month and they're fabulous using the shop your looks part of the app. Anyway, side note. Dave had the camera and I swore he was recording for the searing part of the roast, but when I went back to look at the footage, we must have like turned it off instead of on for that section. So, but I did sear the roast for a good 18 or 20 minutes, pulled it out and then added all of my veggies. So I have a ton of red onions in here, probably four cups, carrots, celery, and garlic. There goes, oh, this was actually after I put the wine in and cooked it down. So it's two cups of wine. I used a Cabernet. And I want to say like eight cups of beef broth. Half of that was homemade and the other half was just the powder junk uh, because it's what I had. And then you put the lid on and you stick it in the oven for a long time. A roast this big, I think took me right at about two and a half hours before I sliced it. I think the oven is at 350 and that pot is so massive. And it's like, look, it's kind of bending the rack there. <laughs> Um, I was like, oh, please, please don't break. And trying out my KitchenAid, I'm not real good at it yet with this new recipe that I'll probably show you later. I need to tweak the recipe a little bit, guys, before I can show it to you. And it was a little too much dough for the KitchenAid. The Bosch would have been better. I pulled my roast out and I'm about to slice it. I got half of my cooking liquid and vegetables into the blender right here. And I'm supposed to blend it and put it back in. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, slice the meat and I put it back into my cooking liquid that I pureed. And I'm not supposed to, like the instructions don't say to thin this or boil this down so it's thicker into a gravy. Although you can kind of see how thick it is, but I think served over mashed potatoes, this would, I mean, this tastes really, really good. So there's plenty of liquid in there for my huge, about uh, four or five pound roast. And I'm gonna use these scraps to make some more homemade beef broth, even though I used homemade beef broth in that. I tested out a new roll recipe for you guys. I just wanted to make sure it worked and 
it almost was a total fail, but my, it rose and I was able to salvage them, but these are potato rosemary rolls. I'm so excited. I have my green beans going in my air fryer. Oh yes. This is just oil, uh, kosher salt and pepper. That's it. And I rolled these rolls kind of differently. Just, I don't know, to see which one I like better. I doubled the recipe and used my KitchenAid just to see, oh, I'll do a whole video on them later. I have to clean up all the cooking stuff. <laughs> Mashed potatoes going in the Instant Pot. Ouch, that's really hot. <laughs> Mashed potatoes going here. And I made another batch of my coconut date triple bites because I had more dates at the house. Put a little sea salt on top. Yum. And we are almost ready to go. I'm working on my chicken orzo soup. And so far I have cooking in some bacon fat. I'm telling you guys, if you're not saving your bacon fat, what are you doing with your life? I have some celery, onion, carrot, and garlic with one lone chicken breast with salt and pepper, oregano, rosemary, and two bay leaves are in there as well. They're in there. And so we're sauteing these until everything's like got a nice color on it. And then we're gonna add our chicken broth and let it simmer for about 20 minutes. I really like soups as far as a budget meal because there's very rarely you can feed an entire family of six on one chicken breast unless you break it up into like a soup or a stir fry or something like that. So far so good, smells delicious. Okay, go make this soup. The lemon juice at the end, I think made this soup. Dave liked it so much. He thought like if you're sick or something, this would be really, really nice because lemon is so good for you when you're not feeling well. We also served it with a salad. This was a total winner, you guys. And I actually had a couple of rolls left over from the roast, so we finished those up as well. I'm making brownies. Right now we're... For gay? <laughs> right now we're stirring up some melted butter and some 100% cacao. <laughs> you know what you <laughs> Baking chocolate. And we're just waiting for it to melt. 90% the dirt the beans were grown in. So why are we making brownies? Um, the, th the thought came up at dinner, Dad mm. was just like, I want some brownies. And then everybody else said, I want some brownies. Mm -hmm. And therefore, brownies. We, we have brownies. This recipe hails from my brother-in-law who is originally from Norway. You know what's sad is it looks like we had a lot of brownies, but we all, only all have one. By the way, do you guys have a brownie pan? Are you team edges or team center? We are team edges. So this is like the best brownie pan on the planet earth because everybody gets all of the corners all of the time. That is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the recipes and all of the food that my family has eaten over the last week or so. If you wanna see any of the recipes that I use, if I can find them, I will link them down below. I cannot get an online recipe of the pot roast recipe. I, I can't find a link to it anywhere online. So you're gonna have to buy the cookbook if you, <laughs> if you want her recipe. I think she has some kind of deal where you can't repost it or something is probably what's going on. And if you haven't hit the thumbs up button yet, I hope you would consider doing that. Some nights we eat healthy and some nights we eat nachos. I mean, what can I say here? <laughs> we try, we try and do real life and you know, sometimes it's not picture perfect. That's not really what this channel is about anyway. <laughs> So thanks for joining me today. I always have a great time with you and until next time.